uh, just want like to thank the organization of the convention to give me the possibility to speak about m my research again from another point of view, uh, which is the, uh, the, the picturesque in teaching work that could be, you know, something like strange, uh, but um, I noticed that we have some common point with Evo, Evo in t um, speech uh, and it's a great surprise for me, it's a good surprise. Uh, in 1912, Nino Salvaneschi published uh, uh, in, uh, on Italian newspaper Il Resto del Carlino an article about the Tripolitania and Cyrenaica war movies entitled The War from Close Up, La Guerra Vista da Vicino. Describing the movies uh, and the reaction of the public, Salvaneschi wrote, the audience crowed into the lobbies of the movie theater. They rushed they rushed the, um, into the empty seats, just like our soldier rushed into the twin seers. The audience is silent and follows the parade of episodes and alarms without a movement. Someone touches their eyes. In the warm air there is uh, so much poetry and so much religion, and this is as if uh, everyone's heart is so far away. In the same year, 1915, uh, Michele Mastropaolo, referring to the use of cinema as teaching tool for uh, school children, wrote, we don't need a special investigation uh, to recognize that the cinema simulates the activity of the spirit. An action takes place quickly on the white rectangle and we turn spontaneously to attention. The memory fixes the images itself, throw fits, the motion invades the heart, beats faster. The whole soul is taken from the events of the action that take place and suffers or rejoice according to generality of the events and the interpretative power of the artist. We find Salvaneschi and Mastro Paolo words particularly suitable to introduce the question of the heart of our proposal. What is the relationship between the army and the images, uh, uh, picture, photography and cinematography between the end, in the end of 18 and the first decade of 19 and how this relation is linked to the concept of picturesque and its role in the representation of the, of the battle. In order to try to answer this question, we must take an important fact into the account. There exists a photography and cinematography created by the army and addressed solely to the army. They are subject to an independent evolution and the origin could be found at the beginning of the 19, probably 1905. A type of cinema aimed at the war but not about the battle produced by the Italian Army General Staff in peacetime. Before going to the point, we still have to define the spatial and the temporary framework in which we would like to move. We will not um, we will move in time frame that start at the end of 18, which is the um, beginning of the experiment, and not going beyond the 1914-1915, meaning just before, before World War I. It means that the most of the document and the fact I will refer to are related to the Italo-Turkish War. Because uh, the idea of uh, my speech is to find the origin of this kind of cinema, even if the concept can be used also in the following years. About the spatial coordinates, it would be too ambition for this talk to expand beyond the Italian national border, even if we can find um, the idea to produce cinema for the internal purpose also in the army around Europe and the United States in the same period. The study and the document uh, I am about to present here are all based in sources found in the historical archive of military engineer unit in Rome, in the archive of the history office of the Italian German Army General Staff, and in the military magazine kept in the Central Library in Rome and the National Library of Rome and Florence. All that said, uh, we can make just uh, with the purpose to introduce this kind of cinema that is the focus of my last year researches a sort of scheme that try to divide it, the, the production, made, production made by the army in two free big areas. War entertainment film, meaning all the film in which the main plot is war itself, including documentaries, and which have been directly or indirectly produced by the Italian Army General Staff as co-producer, consultant or subject of the film. 
educational training film. In other words, these are all those movies that have been produced by the Italian Army or under its direct supervision with the aim of educating and training soldiers. Scientific experimental cinema, meaning the film mainly produced by the military engineering unit, Il Genio, uh, in order to study or focus uh, on reality directly concerning the preparation to the war and the fight itself, for example, we, for example, we even now Battlefield. The main aim of this type of film was to, reproduce, to produce the more powerful and efficient war tools or strategy. During this speech, we will focus on particular aspects that cross all that, those areas and that we can define using Heraclitus' war. words. Father is, uh, uh, war is father of all uh, and king of all. So, in a way, we do love this father because of its nature. So, the film produced by the army for the army have all the same purpose, to represent the battle as something familiar and normalize the idea of war, turning on the, uh, turning on the light of beauties and moral value, and turning off the same lights on the more painful and less noble aspect of the war. The more clear, to be more clear, we can use the word of Barbara Tuchman wrote at the end of the book, The Guns of August. The war had main, many different results, and one dominant, one transcending all the others, disillusion. What will remain is the art of the war, the poetry, the prose, the paintings, photographs and films. So, images produced by the army for the army could have different goals, as we saw, but for sure they have a common intent to destroy the idea of disillusion and replace it with the idea of heroism, created a sorting of link between the concept of war and the idea of beauty. In training of soldier, this concept becomes fundamental and cinema is the most e e efficient means capable to catching the soldier's attention, involve them and get them emotionally invested. The Italian Army General Staff understand clearly the potential of moving images in tell, teaching and show the war. Since the invention, the invention of the magic lantern, the officers start to use this new method and as testified by some article brought by the Infanti Captain Carmine Licomati and published in La Rivista Militare in 1911, which refer uh, on the um, uh, year around uh, 1848 uh, uh, and uh, following years, but cinema seems the most tweetable means capable to satisfy the Italian army needs. In the same years, 1912, in fact, Corrado Bressan wrote an article, Cinema in the Army Barracks, in which he described the reaction of the soldier to the use of cinema in uh, war teaching, the interest uh, and involvement in front of the movie, and the difference between the same lesson with, with and without the movie support. So, how is it possible? How is it possible to keep soldier attention and get them emotionally involved using the picturesque power of the war? And its emotional impact in order to involve the mind of soldiers and allow him to learn faster, easier and better. We must consider also that Italy had long been counting on a high number of poorly trained infantrymen. What worried the most between the end of 80 and the beginning of 19 is therefore the fact that the strength of the soldier is not gradually being replaced by his skills. As required by the European military establishment, a soldier is supposed to bear stress as well find a certain familiarity almost extracorporeal with weapons. So, war images uh, with their picturesque power are called to answer two, two different needs. Bring forward and not lose the noble aim of war into the new media, creating a fusion between the use of the new audiovisual language and preservation of the traditional soul of the battle that is, at the beginning of 19, quickly changing its nature, had to concept of modern war. Allow soldiers to have a virtual access at the battlefield without taking any risk and normalize the war experience. Let's start for the first point. Cinema. Sorry, it's not so easy. Okay. 
Cinema offers sort of privileged distance from where watch the bother clearly. The distance became more and more essential in order to organize uh, and fight the modern world. In those years, in fact, war is transforming itself in something mysterious and difficult to predict and control. During the modern wars, in distance um, in the battlefield widen, tactical object uh, are transformed and the enemy makes himself less and less discernible by the naked eyes. The use of, of cinema and photography, therefore, perfectly suit this global process and widening the, of widening, widening and mechanization of the soldier's senses. I saw, we cannot deny, uh, we read, for example, in 1911 in La Preparazione that we have a long entered and gradually advancing through a phase in which the machine invades everything. The article went on, mechanical automatisms is replacing human energy in all fields. The invasion of said automatism mirror life's or ordinary condition, a relation of human energy that were once able to make miracles during the wars when strained by supreme effort. So, in this panorama, cinema is feeling like a means capable of erasing your, uh, human error, reporting an image that is adherent to those physical data. This new kind of war, fought in faraway lands, forced the army to be equipped with the more technological weapons and to revisit standard of analysis and recording of reality. The battlefield and the war uh, uh, the battlefield and the way the war itself was fought were changing rapidly. Turn uh, this run in chase, the machine, as we understand from the animated debates we, uh, that we were recording in the magazine of the time, did not only determine the development of weapons and ammunition, but also transform the structure of the battle itself. Cinema and photography are in the army eyes weapons that must be included in the soldier equipment and allow him to train and develop his courage. That is the characteristic that will distinguish him from a common machine. <coughs> army felt the needs to paint this idea of heroism, which is something that seemed to be in conflict with the idea of a technological war. Because the unique difference between the two robot fighting soldiers is following what the articles of this time said, human being and courage. This concept brings us to point two. Arising the dire part of the war, I mean the feeling linked to the death, fear and disillusion, images and in particular moving images, seems to be able to create a great illusion, describing war as something far away from an, any negative concept, and also thanks to the distance granted by the screen, as Salbaneski said in the above cited article. Like this, sitting in the cinema, you can watch a military inspection and a nine-time alarm at, at the wheel, or an entire battle with wounded men and dead bodies, or ship firing their cannons into an oasis crawling with enemies. So the film describes war as something so beautiful that you can watch it without taking any risk, but at the same time, thanks to the movie, war is not unknown and you can feel it as you were there. The cinematog uh, Salvaneski Gohan, the cinematograph, brought the air of war so close to our audience that one could say that the quivering of the screen is nothing more than the breeze of our people. The cinematograph has done, is doing and will do a commemorable job promoting healthy nationalism. In conclusion, the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th is a crucial moment for the war history. The modern conflicts take place in the space created between weapons and no longer in the space created between bodies. It is a battle that is fought at the distance and that is often led again and a new enemy may be invisible to the naked eyes. A battle that is becoming more and more aseptic. Placed in this contest, cinema and photography are called to answer to a double need to teach the modern battle system from a side and to keep the world traditional value for the order. Cinema in particular is invested by the role to maintain the traditional solo war and bring in battle into the modern era. Picturesque in this sense is the key that allows the soldier to be emotionally involved 
a, in a battle that is becoming more and more far from human sensation, giving him uh, with imaginary wings which possibly allow him to survey the scary and gory modern world and defeat uh, the feeling of disillusion ri ri rising uh, using James Hillman's word, a martial state of soul. Cinema is so means called to generate an amplification of sensing, senses of the fighter who aims at the becoming a uber soldat and separable from his mechanical prothesis as well as, uh, for using James Hillman again, a terrible love of war. Going to war, Hillman wrote, means to introduce our mind to a military service. We are not going to war in the name of peace, as this sinful rhetoric so often declares, but rather for war's own sake, to understand the madness of this love. Does the element a, lo a terrible love of war, together with the martial state of soul and the sense of familiarity with weapons and battlefields, are inseparable and essential to create a good soldier. A terrible love of war begins with uh, uh, the description of a scene from the movie Patton that seemed perfect to close uh, this speech. Where the general walk in walks in, um, into the fields uh, of uh, burnt tanks and dead men, uh, kisses and dying soldier and say, I love it, God. I love it so, um, uh, I love it, God help me. I do love it so, I love it more than my life. Thank you. <laughs>